everyone. Welcome to another Clean Machine Live. I'm Jeff Palmer, CEO and founder of Clean Machine. Well, as most of you have probably already heard by now, the slap heard round the world uh, drew a lot of attention to an interesting health condition um, that I think it's important to address. Um, I'm not one for celebrity gossip and all that kind of stuff. But it did draw attention to a, a major health concern called uh, alopecia. Uh, specifically, it's called uh, this uh, specific one we're going to talk about is called androgenetic alopecia or AGA. This is a hair loss in men and women due mostly and predominantly due to DHT levels. What is DHT? DHT is dihydrotestosterone. So uh, men and women both produce testosterone. Uh, women produce smaller amounts of testosterone than men do. Um, but that uh, testosterone can uh, be converted into a metabolite of testosterone called DHT or dihydrotestosterone. And it, it is converted through an enzyme called 5-alpha reductase or 5-AR. So there are certain plants that can actually inhibit that enzyme's activity, bind to the enzyme and prevent your testosterone, whether you're male or female, from converting into DHT. Now, DHT has many different problematic effects, but let's talk about what DHT is actually good for first. Okay, so uh, as men uh, go through puberty, we have a little bit of a surge of DHT. DHT, so you've got testosterone and it can convert through uh, the uh, enzyme 5-alpha uh, reductase into DHT. So testosterone is what's called anabolic. It helps cells grow. DHT is what's called androgenic. Andro meaning male and genic meaning change. So it changes us into men. <laughs> it takes, takes us from being boys to men. And it does that by deepening our voice, uh, helping stimulate some muscle growth and stimulate hair growth in the facial hair, chest hair, uh, armpit hair. Even if you have a high amount of DHC, it can cause all kinds of body hair growth. So men with very high levels of DHT conversion um, and very low levels of inhibitors in their system can actually cause unwanted hair growth. Now, DHT can be found in the oil glands. So DHT can stimulate oil production, which can lead to acne, can lead to a roughening of the skin and aging, premature aging of the skin. So these are some of the negative effects of DHT. And then DHT is probably most famously known for men and affecting their prostate. It's called benign prostate hyperplasia. Hyperplasia means it's growing or getting bigger. And what happens that DHT actually binds to those receptors in prostate, which helps men form and grow a, a healthy prostate in their younger times. But if we continue to have high levels of DHT, it can stimulate that prostate to keep growing and growing and growing when it really doesn't need to grow anymore. And that can cause serious prostate health issues, including prostate cancer. So what has this got to do with Jada Pinkett Smith's alopecia? Well, so many women can actually have uh, androgenic androgenetic alopecia or AGA as well. Actually, about 50% of all men and women will have AGA sometime in their, uh, in their lifetimes, causing some degree of hair loss, if not complete hair loss. So what happens when DHT gets into the system and gets and binds to the receptor sites, especially in the scalp? Because uh, this is where the hair loss is happening. Most of the hair loss that we're concerned about is on our head. So what it does is it makes the hair smaller, shorter. It makes the hair thinner and weaker and softer and can break off easier. So just running combs or brushes through it can cause breakage of the hair when there's too much DHT involved there. So I, I saw Mike the Vegan do a really nice video on, uh, I love Mike the Vegan. Thumbs up, Mike, <laughs> Michael Dearborn. Love your videos, brother. Um, but uh, he, he talked about four different plants that actually had some really positive effects 
on inhibiting DHT to help prevent uh, um, hair loss. And what was interesting, he, he left out the most potent one, <laughs> which is the one that I brought to market. I was the very first to bring this form of uh, cactus flower to the market. So let's take a look at it. And for those of you that were curious about this, that's the cactus flower there. <laughs> that's why I had that picture on the front there. This cactus flower, it's the Apuntia ficus indica, or just good old paddle cactus, uh, nopal cactus, it's called someplace. It's called prickly pear, it's called barberry pear. It's got a lot of different names all around the world, but it's the most ubiquitous plant in the world. And it controls it and adapts to almost every condition of the world. It can survive in extreme wet, it can survive in extreme dry, extreme heat, extreme cold. Uh, it can even survive in nuclear blast. You know, scientists were looking at it saying, well, how does this plant adapt so well? And if it does, what about its sex organ? That's right, the flower is the sex organ of the plant. So they said, well, wait a minute, if it can adapt so well to so many different extremes, maybe it can actually control its hormones really well, optimize and balance and regulate its hormone levels really well. And sure enough, it did. It was one of the best at regulating its own plant hormones really well. Now, sometimes this translates into humans and other animals, and sometimes this doesn't. It only affects the plants, doesn't have the same effect on animals. Fortunately, in this case, this cactus flower actually did affect human males, especially, but even women in the same positive way. So let's take a look at the research. Um, this is the study. So what's interesting about this study, this was the DM33. Now, that is our registered trademark material. So you won't find DM33 in any other product but ours. Um, that is cell block 80. And cell block 80 gets its name from both inhibiting the testosterone conversion to DHT as well as estrogen. And that's important because we're going to get into one of the problems with traditional DHT blockers. All right. So that was amazing. But DHT can also cause prostate issues. So this was done. The aromatase inhibition was done in... Um, uterine tissue, which has a really high amount of binding sites. So it has a high affinity for binding. So it's really good tissue to use in vitro to see if it has any effects. And the other one was prostate tissue. So they used the two highest tissues with the highest amounts of binding uh, or binding sites for the hormones. And this is what they found. This is what's exciting because you know, when you hear about things like uh, saw palmetto or rosemary having good 5-alpha reductase, which is the enzyme that converts testosterone to DHT, that inhibits it. But, you know, when you look on the medical side, when you go to the prescription route, finasteride or dutasteride, uh, commonly known as Proscar or Propecia, are the drugs that are being used, which are DHT inhibitors. They block the 5-alpha uh, reductase and inhi inhibit that enzyme so that it uh, doesn't convert your testosterone to DHT. Now, there's a problem with that. So when you only block DHT, DHT by itself, uh, there is some proper function for it. it. It helps hair growth and things like this but you don't want too high levels of it. So you want to bring those levels back, back down to optimal states. But when you block the DHT, because your DHT is causing the alopecia, the hair loss, what can invertly happen is DHT is a natural estrogen inhibitor. So it keeps the things balanced. But if you just block one of them, then the estrogen can go way up. Well, when estrogen goes way up, it actually has a negative feedback loop that drives down testosterone. Well, you don't want that. So this is one of the problems they have with only blocking DHT. So if you do only the uh, inhibition of 5-alpha reductase, which, which converts testosterone to DHT, you may end up with negative effects like erectile dysfunction or low T. 
So this was a big conundrum. People who were going out and getting a DHT blocker because of prostate issues or because of hair loss were having an unwanted side effect, especially in men, and this was not good. Okay, so what was the problem? The problem was that they're only blocking DHT and not DHT and estrogen at the same time. So almost all the plants in the plant kingdom, even the ones that Mike the Vegan uh, talked about, which was saw palmetto and curcumin and rosemary, very good at blocking DHT, but what about aromatase? So aromatase is the other uh, enzyme that converts testosterone to estrogen. Now, this is where it gets interesting. I'm going to pull up this graph and I'll talk while it's up here so that you can see it. So you start out with DHEA there on the bottom, and then it gets converted to um, uh, and and uh, dione, and then into testosterone. Well, in vegans, uh, especially those in plant-based folks, we have a higher levels because we consume a higher fiber diet. We have, have higher levels of sex hormone binding globulin, so that binds up some of the DA, some of the testosterone, and prevents it from being active. Well, then you have free T or that FT right there in the middle of the page. And you see at that state, when it's in its free T state, it converts to DHT on the right and estrogen there on the left. So by blocking only the DHT, you can actually trigger the body to produce more estrogen. This is not a good thing. So what you need to do is inhibit both of those enzymes so that you're blocking both DHT and estrogen at the same time. Now, most of the plants on the market, uh, like um, saw palmetto and stuff, don't do this in equal dosages, and they don't do it both estrogen and DHT blocking. So when I found this herb, this, this cactus flower, that was tremendous at doing it, it blocked, and here's the results of the study uh, again, it blocked estrogen reduced by 80% and DHT by 80%. That's where cell block 80 gets its name from. So you're equally inhibiting both of those, which allows for more testosterone, whether you're male or female, allows more of that free testosterone to maintain itself. You can lose three to 5% of uh, three to actually up to 10% of your uh, testosterone to DHT and to estrogen. So you can lose up to 20% of your total testosterone just by converting to uh, excess estrogen or DHT that your body really doesn't need. So this is pretty amazing. It keeps that balance going there. Remember, just blocking DHT can cause a spike in estrogen, which then will downgrade or down lower down testosterone, not what you want. So what you want is to block that estrogen and the DHT at the same time. And then you'll get a perfect balance and allow that testosterone to continue forward and actually stimulate the libido, increase your energy, increase your self-confidence, improve your mood, better sleep, all of these benefits. And of course, muscle gains. That's why I'm in my 60th year of life and I can maintain this but do it in a healthy way where I'm not risking my prostate. See, when you take testosterone, if you take an exogenous source of testosterone like steroids, what it can do is overload that system and cause even more conversion to estrogen and DHT. You basically overload and causing a superfluous amount of conversion. It forces this, your body says, whoa, that's way too much testosterone. Let's start converting it to everything else. And that's where you get into raw, real big problems. That's why in steroid users, you can see breast growth because that's too much estrogen conversion. It's called gynecomastia in men. Uh, you can see um, uh, hirsutism, which is too much DT, uh, DHT in women, and they get the deepening of the voice and the man hands and all those androgenic effects. Um, so this excess testosterone just overloads the system and causing all these negative side effects. What we're doing here with this cactus flower is just the opposite. It's bringing them back down into optimal states so that more of your active free T actually does what's supposed to do. Increase strength, increase muscle, increase energy, improve your libido, all the benefits without the negative side effects. 
this is the right way to do this without the hair loss, without the estrogen causing excess fat and water retention, uh, without the DHT causing oily skin and acne and bad aging of skin and wrinkling of skin, without the estrogen uh, causing gynecomastia and other negative side effects in men and women. This is the proper way to do it in a balanced, equal way. And this plant is phenomenal at it. It is the best plant in the world at regulating both estrogen and DHT, maintaining optimal levels of healthy free T to give you all the effects that you want without the hair loss, without all the negative side effects, without the prostate issues, without the acne, without the, uh, you know, the fat gain, water retention. When all right. So when women ask, hey, wait a minute, don't I need some of my estrogen? Well, yeah, but women produce estrogen mostly through their ovaries and through fat cells. Fat cells actually can create estrogen. So that's the predominant way you produce it. This, the, the testosterone that women produce, what you don't want is that turning into more estrogen. That estrogen piles onto that. Now, you can have that experience every time you go through menses at once a month, uh, if you're still on your, have your cycle, that excess estrogen you can feel, water retention, bloating, that excess weight gain that you get from it, that's excess estrogen happening in your, stop, in your body. When you can inhibit that uh, testosterone, your own testosterone that your body produces for all the health benefits it needs, whether you're male or female, stop that from produce, turning into estrogen. Now you can have more of that testosterone actually giving you better muscle definition, better weight loss, less water retention, less fat gain. That's the proper way to do that by balancing and inhibiting both of those at the same time. When I found this herb that blocked both estrogen and DHT conversion, both equally by over 80%, this was phenomenal. And why it's our best selling product, even to this date, it was the very first product I made. Now, social media won't allow me to, to post anything. Even Amazon won't allow me to advertise uh, about this because testosterone products are getting a really bad name, but this has real scientific evidence behind it. This is the actual cell studies. There were two follow-up clinical studies to say, hey, wait a minute, but does this really happen in the real world? That was in human cells in a Petri dish. Does this really happen? They did two human clinical trials, a three-month and a six-month trial, and found it reduced prostate issues up to 80% within months. Now, this is phenomenal because normally if you boost testosterone, you run the risk of higher DHT levels, which then cause can cause prostate problems. So higher T means prostate issues. So guys were, were forced with this problem of, wait a minute, higher T means more hair loss and more prostate issues. I don't want this. And for women, Higher, DH, higher T could mean DHT too as well. DHT can cause alopecia. Remember, up to 50% of men and women will have alopecia, uh, androgenic or AGA uh, alopecia in their lifetime, 50%. So this is affecting most people. All right, so you don't want that. So the wonderful thing about this is by blocking DHT, is it not only great for men for prostate, great for men for hair, but it's also great for women because testosterone itself is anabolic. It means it helps cells grow. This is when you are exercising, you get a better response out of that. Whether you're doing endurance exercise, it strengthens the tissues, or whether you're doing uh, weightlifting or weight training, it gives you better definition. So all of this can be helpful to you. What you don't want is converting it to DHT. DHT is androgenic. Testosterone, anabolic, grows cells. That's what it does. Uh, testosterone itself does not cause masculinization. DHT is what causes masculinization. It is andro male genic change. That's what men use during puberty to grow into a masculine side. Now, once you become male, you don't get any more male. So no, DHT is not better to, doesn't make you more masculine as you age. As a matter of fact, it could end up killing you. Uh, Prostate cancer is the uh, number one hormone cancer killer of men in the United States. So not a good thing to continually have that. And it can cause back hair growth. It can cause acne. It can cause the aging and wrinkling of the skin as well as hair loss. So nothing really great about increasing 
DHT levels uh, in men. Um, but the good thing is, by blocking that DHT with this cactus, cactus flower, you're reducing the estrogen, so you're reducing the body fat. You're reducing the DHT, so you're reducing the risk of hair loss, but you're also not getting the androgenic effects that many women are afraid of. This is why Cell Block 80 is such a popular product amongst men and women. It has the health benefits that I'm looking for. Look, I would have never touched the whole hormone category because hormones are a very delicate thing that need balance. That's why I formulated this product, Cell Block 80, to balance each and every step. So if you look at this graph, it needs to be updated since we changed from Sensoril to um, KSM ashwagandha because it's clinically proven a little bit more effective than Sensoril. So I upgraded the formula. So the ashwagandha then can boost up your DHEA. DHEA is the master hormone of the body, can help you produce all the hormones that your body needs. Plus it has powerful antioxidant effects on its own. Once you have that higher DHEA, and that can boost it up by 32%. So once it gets in there, then you wanna reduce that sex hormone binding globulin so that you allow more free T. We put a stinging nettle in there that uh, binds to that sex hormone binding globulin and increases the amount of free T. That's the available T that your body can use to stimulate all those positive effects. Now, once it gets to free tea, though, you have to be concerned about those two, that DHT and the, uh, the estrogen. And this cactus flower, this amazing Apuntia cactus flower called DM33, blocks both estrogen and DHT by over 80%. This allows more free tea to reach that androgen receptor site in the muscle. And this is where testosterone can impart all of those beneficial effects in the muscle. But the ashwagandha also blocks cortisol. Now this is really important because cortisol can actually inhibit testosterone. So when you think about uh, testosterone cortisol, we actually call it the testosterone to cortisol ratio. So when cortisol goes up, testosterone goes down. And when testosterone goes up, cortisol is suppressed. And that's the reason being is Testosterone is anabolic, build cells, grow cells. Cortisol is catabolic, tear down cells, use them, the cells for energy, use the cells for building materials. So you can't build and tear down at the same time. So it's like a seesaw. If your body says, okay, higher cortisol, tear down muscle tissue, higher testosterone, build muscle tissue. So what you wanna do is reduce that cortisol so that testosterone has a better chance at actually giving you all those health benefits. That's why I formulated this affecting all five of the anabolic phases of, of uh, optimal hormones, your DHEA, your sex hormone binding globulin, your estrogen and DHT modulation, and binding and, and inhibition of the cortisol. When you've got all five of those in play, now you've got a truly balanced optimal state that gives your body the best chance to regulate itself these things can get out of regulation through lack of exercise, through poor diet, through exposure to toxins, to stress. Stress is a killer, wrecks the whole hormones situation there, raising cortisol through the roof, depressing testosterone, increasing estrogen, just messing up that whole thing. Using plants that have really powerful effects on helping modulate, stabilize, optimize your hormone levels so that your body can get the best effects. That's one of the reasons that even at the 60th year of my life, I can be in the best shape of my life. I have got more muscle than I did when I was 30. This is that vitality that you can have with the help of these plants. Yes, there are other minor foods that can do small amounts, you know, like uh, I read one study that showed Saw palmetto had anywhere from eight to 18 percent uh, uh, inhibition on on uh, on DHT. Well, 18 percent is good. That's that's not bad, but it's not 80 percent. This is where you get into a, a plant that is amazing at what it does, and I, that's what I wanted to do when I find these studies. I want to bring these plants to market so more people can enjoy the health benefits as well as the fitness benefits. You can get better results out of the gym when your hormones are optimized. You can get better results out of every exercise that you do. 
plus affecting sexual health. I mean, the ashwagandha increases um, sperm count and fertility in both men and women, sexual satisfaction in both men and women. Just amazing research out there on these ingredients and, and their positive effects on helping people uh, get the most out of life, whether it's fitness, whether it's sexual activity, whether it's just overall health. Hey, and even importantly, if you don't want to lose your hair, because it can be very embarrassing. And, and uh, I, I totally understand why um, uh, why Will Smith ended up slapping uh, uh, on stage uh, to protect, you know, in defense of Jada Pinkett Smith, who is suffering from um, uh, possibly uh, androgenetic alopecia. Listen, this can happen to anyone. It's 50% of both men and women can possibly be getting this. There are some amazing plants out there that can really help. Obviously, exercise and a plant-based plant diet, both have been sh shown to positively affect DHT levels, bring them back down into healthy levels. But when you add these, these plants that really are best in class at what they do, you can get so much better results from your gym and from your health, even to the to the 50s, 60s, 70s and beyond. So that's what I want to give for people. I look for the research out there and then bring these plants. DM33 didn't even exist in the marketplace until I brought it in the marketplace back in 2013. When I launched it, it within three months, it was already selected as a finalist for best sports nutrition product of the year. I want to share these plants with you because they have exceptional qualities. I hope this uh, review of the research and and look, you know, no one wants to, uh, none of you guys out there want to just block DHT because it raises that estrogen level and you don't want to end up uh, having to wear a bro. You know, that that's just, uh, that's just not right. And yeah, that is me on the bottom there at the uh, upper left-hand side with Corinne and Mark and Derek and uh, Forrest and Monk, uh, all vegans, all with no uh, high estrogens. And yes, many of them, including myself, Corinne, we're all using Cell Block 80 because it has such positive effects in overall health. That's what I want for you. I hope you enjoyed this one. Please give it a thumbs up, share it. If you have any questions, leave it. I do look like we have one comment here. Let me go to the comment. Okay, uh, Raymond uh, said, if you have enlarged prostate, what would you do? Uh, because prostate, uh, enlarged prostate is, or BPH is considered a um, disease state, I can't address that. All I can do is show you the research, lead you to the research, and tell you that uh, the uh, key ingredient, DM33, was shown in two clinical human trials, that's living human beings in vivo to reduce prostate issues up to 80%. Um, this, is, this is the study I will pull up here. This is the actual study on the cactus flower. I've been showing you the graphs from this study, but this is the actual study if any of you wanna read it. It's called cactus flower extracts may prove beneficial in benign prostate hyperplasia or BPH due to inhibition of 5-alpha reductase activity, aromatase activity, and lipid peroxidation. This cactus flower actually uh, is a powerful antioxidant and helps reduce water retention. So it has all kinds of health benefits in it too. So this is an amazing thing. Um, this is the quote directly from the study. Thus about 80% of the enzymatic activities of both aromatase, which is estrogen, converts testosterone to estrogen, and 5-alpha reductase, which is the enzyme that converts testosterone to DHT, in crude placenta, placenta, sorry, not uterine, placenta, because it has a lot of binding receptors. So you can see very good if that tissue is, is uh, receptive to that. Or prostate extracts were inhibited by our cactus flower extracts, uh, but the properties of the subfractions of DM3 and DM33, which is what is in cell block 80, were even greater. So it is actually over 80% inhibition. This really helps modulate and bring these back into balance so that your body can produce. Yes, the body can overcome. You won't over suppress by an herb. Herbs are, are 
weak in their ways, but they do help initially bring the body back into its optimal states and balance. I've had many people um, talk to me about, hey, uh, I've been off this for a couple of months, but I still feel really good positive effects and have my blood work done and had positive effects. And I said, that's because you got your back, you moved your body back into its optimal state and wants to stay there. The body will attempt to stay in optimal state for long, even when not using it. But why do that? Because whatever the stressors are, whatever the, the, the bad diet or lack of exercise can move those back out of balance again, and then you're in trouble all over again. That's why I've been taking Cell Block 80 every day for the last eight years straight. I love the product. It's one of my favorite products. Mix that with the N10s. Oh my God, you'll get amazing results in the gym. <laughs> I can almost guarantee it. Every person is different. So yes, there's going to be some exceptions to the rules. If you're taking prescription drugs or things like that, please talk to your doctor. Um, and with any uh, use of supplements, um, let me go ahead and do the disclaimer. This video is for informational purposes only and is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. If you do have a disease state, talk to your doctor, show them the research that's available that we have there and talk to them about uh, possible natural ways of approaching that. But listen to your doctor and take your doctor's advice. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for living. If this was important to you, if you know people who are losing their hair and could benefit, please let them know. That's why I bring these plants to market so that people can really benefit from um, what is shown in the public, uh, shown in the published research um, in humans, both in vitro and in vivo. Let's get this out there and help some people and let's uh, protect uh, both men and women from having to deal with things. And uh, so we have a few less slaps in, <laughs> in the world having to defend against those um, mean comments. Thanks for listening, everyone. We'll see you next week.